us to continue. What time did you plan on lunch arriving and all that? It's always the same. So we have a few minutes, we probably should keep going and we'll go right up to the end and we'll take a break. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ask you to speak up a little bit and slow down. Okay, and I'm sorry. I'm nervous. Don't need to be nervous. I'm not that mean. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect all of this. Um, anyway, so number one, my management um, study. Management studies. Yeah, my studies are not going well. Not long in here, I guess. I guess. Well, to my management studies, I, I was taught to, um, you know, know your chain of command, respect your chain of command, know your chain of command, and I've, I've struggled with that part of my study in, in this department. Okay. Uh, and did you have occasion to have your performance review while you were working for the Justice Court? Yes. And how were your reviews? How my reviews, the well's been great because I was taught I was hired for my people skills. Um, but it was challenging for me. The technical part of the job in English really challenging because um, being a courtroom clerk is really hard. I mean, it's, it takes a year just of training. So trying to run a job because I was expected to be a working supervisor. So trying to run a job as a as a as a courtroom clerk and you know trying to establish relationships with my employees and be a supervisor all at the same time it was, it was extremely challenging. And who did your performance reviews in the past few years? Can you tell us? Um, the first one, so the first two, I think, was Elizabeth Koda. She was the um, my, uh, uh, unit administrator, the division administrator. And then Dave Denson was my division administrator. But he didn't give me my the third one. Okay. Okay. So to... um, Will, um, Will, um, Will and Jimenez. Yeah. This is the one giving my third evaluation. And what was his position? His position, he is acting um, court division administrator. And whose place did he take? He took over Dave Benson's position. Up until the time that Dave Benson was was still there, had you had any issues with regard to performance? No. It, have you had any disciplinary actions or counseling regarding your, your position? No. After that, after he was gone, did you have disciplinary actions or counseling? I've had one disciplinary action and four or five investigatory meetings. What came with those four or five? Nothing. Well, there was one time I ended up receiving and I ended up, I mean, the other ones were dismissed. The, the one that you, were, that you received and wasn't dismissed, what was that for? Um, I, that, I was told that I was a supervisor of um, an employee that was terminated, and I didn't. So I didn't. I wasn't supervising this employee. So I didn't keep you know what she was doing or um, didn't see what time she came in and out. But I wouldn't have been able to do that because she was never my employee. I didn't have access to her computer. To, okay, when you're an employee, you have to monitor the, the attendance. Um, you have to have access, and you have to be your employee to have access to their attendance. And I've, she's never been my employee, um, so I couldn't monitor her attendance or any. She just wasn't my responsibility. She was never my employee. Were you, the, were you the only supervisor who was uh, disciplined for that? No, I heard there was another supervisor that was disciplined for the exact same thing. Tell the commission if you would where you fit in the organization of the Justice Court clerks, uh, the supervisors, and so forth. Explain it to us uh, where you fit in the picture. Well, as a, as a supervisor, I mean, yeah. Correct. Well, I supervise courtroom clerks and backup clerks. Um, we do like the discipline. Mm -hmm. In my position, what I do as a supervisor, is that what you're asking? Correct. Okay, so we do. So like, who you work with? Who the other supervisors are? Oh, that's right. the organization. I work with um, Jennifer, who is the other supervisor. Jennifer. Adir is the other supervisor. Um, William Jimenez is another supervisor I work with. And then he's, again, an acting court division administrator. And then um, Jennifer Baker is now the acting treasurer. I want to just add that in 17 years, I've been with the county 17 years, and I've never had any discipline actions taken against. In the 17 years that I've been in four departments, not one time. Until the ones you just Until said. April 1st. And Until April 1st. Then I got five. And the ones you say went nowhere, nothing happened with them, uh, I believe you said dismissed, I don't know. Can you tell us, do you know who made those? Yes, the, the first one was made by Moesha Proctor. Um, 
I was accused. Let's not go into my son. Um, I was Marisha Prosser, Rita Gonzalez, and Jose. Jose Espinoza. From now on, you just use first names. We're trying to do what we can to protect the yeah. employees. Okay. okay. I should have said that. No earlier. problem. Sorry. Absolutely. While we're going back, you mentioned about your previous 17 years with the county. Let me ask you just, just briefly, you said you had some education back east. Uh, what's your family background? Um, my mother, she's, 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 she was born in Puerto Rico. She's a white Hispanic. My father was born in the Dominican Republic. He's a black Hispanic. I was born and raised in the United States, Virgin Islands. I'm a black Hispanic. And were any of those complaints that you just said were dismissed, nothing came about them? Did it have anything to do with allegations that you were a racist? Correct. Against black Hispanics. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, Justices of the Peace, uh, Bias and Chimney? Yes, I am. Can you see them here today? Yes. Uh, let me ask you, did, did you file at some point in time a complaint with the Commission on Judicial Discipline? Yes, I did. Do you remember when that was? Um, that was around probably around March of 2019. You have a very large notebook in front of you, and I ask you to take a look at a document in there to look it up. To exhibit one, you see the tab on the bottom, but it's the larger one, on page 11, in the lower right hand. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And what is that document? Do you recognize it? Yeah, it's a letter that I wrote to the commission. Is it dated? It's dated March 5th. Okay. Of uh, this year? Of March 5th, 2019, correct. And that's the one you sent to the commission? Correct. But I don't know when I sent it. That's when I first started typing it at home. But I don't know if I sent it on that day. Okay. I think I sent it later. And what was your intent in sending this letter to the commission? My intent was just to hopefully get some clarification. Um, Again, as a supervisor, I was being undermined. Every time I made, seen that I was making a decision, I was being undermined. So, um, I felt now I was being, I could be held liable because people were getting bullied and I wasn't allowed to reprimand. So, I couldn't show. I couldn't show. If somebody, if, if one of, if an employee decided to sue the county, I couldn't show that I was, um, that I've done something about the bullying because every time I tried to, to make a decision to do my job, basically, I was told that I couldn't do it, not to give him a coaching and counseling, not to give him, not to do what I'm supposed to do as a supervisor because the judges wanted to be, I didn't know what to tell my boss's boss, and then my boss would tell me not to give him a coaching and counseling. So now I'm not liable, county is liable because I can't show that we're doing something about the issue. Now I noticed that your complaint talks about some judges. Was your intent ever to? Have these judges removed? Never, never. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think we would end up here, honestly. I, I actually tried to keep it all within county. And before this, this went out, I did a letter to the county commissioner. I tried to keep it within county. So I sent county, all the county commissioners, on letter, just no name, no employees, and no signature. Because I, I was horrified that there were problems that I wouldn't want to do. Um, I sent it to all the commissioners, county managers. Let me stop you just for a minute when you say horrified that they would find out. Who would find out? The judges would find out. Okay. I didn't well, want to know that I was the one to send the letter because I just, all I wanted was for someone to simply just come in and ask the questions that would have gotten answers. Okay. And when was this that you filed something with the county, I believe you said? I think it was right after I had done an email from Judge Melanie Tobias. To 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 she had sent an email that really upset me. And you give us a, can you give us a time? Period. That was in um, August of 2018. So it was not this year, it was before this year. Correct. And but it just took so long. Like, they sent out all these letters and county managers and human resource managers. No one ever responded. No one did anything about it. That's what I was going to ask. Did you get a response? No, nothing. Nothing. So then I was compelled and so I decided to go to my union. So I was hoping that my union 
I could use my union as a shield. Um, so they will know it's me, but you would have to go through my union to get to me. But I was hoping that my union could help. Because all I wanted was to be able to do my job, all this just so I can simply do my job. Well, let, me um, ask you, let me ask you first before you go on, that's exactly where I was going to go. But let me ask you, did you tell anyone at the time you filed that first complaint? The initial, very first complaint, no one, no one. And when you say you, you went to the union, did you take, are you talking about taking this complaint to the union? Later, after I didn't hear anything back, and I called, I went to my break room and there was a picture of a guy, the, the union guy, I didn't know the supervisor, I was supposed to contact another union steward. I contacted the guy that was in the break room and told him I needed to talk to him about a situation. I bought a copy of the first com complaint letter I sent to the county commissioners and, and county managers. Um, and give it to him. He said, well, I'll take a copy of that so I can take it to the union's attorney. Um, so time has time progressed. I was with, and he knew that there were no names on it, but he knew the names, he knew the characters, he knew which judges I was referring to, who was the employees, because I found out that they were friends with some of these people. Um, so as time progressed, I was like, did you hear anything from the attorney yet? And he said, no, I haven't heard anything from the attorney. He said, I'm just, and the others just seem to have we heard from the attorney not yet. And then let me let me stop you. Uh, what attorney are we talking about? He said the union attorney, he didn't give me a name. He said the union attorney. And when we talk about he, it was this the union? Damon Palmer. Damon? Damon Palmer. And this is the union rep, you said? This is the union rep that gave the original, my, but the first letter to you. You thought he was the appropriate one to give it? Correct. Now, at any time, did you tell anyone in, in your office that you were that you filed a complaint? I, I did. I had I had to because after I went on the line, the, I hadn't heard anything. The attorney, every time I asked him, I mean, weeks and weeks went by. Um, and so finally, I asked him, I said, I need to talk to you. So you down and met me in the second floor. We were talking, and he said, um, Well, you know what? The judge is on your problem. The management is your problem. We got kind of into an argument. I'm like, Well, I'm coming to my union to help me. Aren't you guys going to help me? He said, no, when I don't represent you, I represent the clerks. So now I went into panic mode and I felt so impotent because here's this guy. I trusted this person as a union brother and I gave him this letter that I was trying to keep a secret. And now he had it in his possession. Now I know, I know for a fact he was friends with Erica Howard. He's friends with Movisha. He said, where's your talking to her? She's my friend. I've known her for a long time. This is the argument that we okay. have gotten into. So, so he, had he, still, he still had that letter in his possession. To this day, he still has that letter in his possession. But he did nothing with it. He did nothing with it. And then I found out that he didn't, he didn't even have access to the, to the union's attorneys. OK, let, let me ask you then. You, you, you go back to the question I asked. At what point did you tell anybody in the office? Immediately after he did that, and I found out that he was representing the clerk. He didn't represent me. I told my boss, Dave Denson. I told Melody, I'm a human resource analyst. And um, and I called and then he I called another when I was in the air, I called another union store because at that time Demont texted me a phone number. He said this is the number you should call. I have those texts. He said this is the number you should call. When he should have told me that at the very beginning. Okay, let's go back. I want to make sure we know who all you told in the clerk's office about the filing of this complaint with the county. So I told I told David Denson, my boss. I told him that um, Melody, the human resource, and um, the, the, I told Sherry Paris at one point, and um, and um, the union, my union store. Any other? No one, no one else. Okay. Were you telling your coworkers or any other? No, no. Okay. And at any time. Now this is this is prior to filing the complaint with the commission. Correct. Okay. And at any time did you say that you were going to take down the judges? Never. Was that that was never my intent. Never my intent. I just wanted to simply do my job. That's what I wanted to do. And did anybody encourage you to file a complaint with the judicial discipline? Yes, yeah, so it was a few of them. The day that I received that um, email from Judge Tobiasen, I was really upset about it. So I walked over to, to, to the administration, the office, of the, um, our administrator's office. Kim Kaplan was on vacation. My boss, David Denson, was on vacation. So 
So Sherry Kers was the acting court administrator. She was in her office. Rizal walked into her office while I was there. Um, let, me, let me ask you, Rizal who? Rizal Hernandez, she is not the acting court, the big court administrator. Okay, go ahead. So they were in their office and I was telling them they were reading their email and they told me, um, what email? The email that Judge Tobias had sent us, the one that was um, okay. in, in August 2018, the one that I'm telling right. And they, they, you know, was reading the email that she sent and they just started, they, they kind of tried to play it out. They said, you know what, don't, that's not her, she's crazy, she's crazy. No, 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 she's crazy, she's dumb, she's medicating, she's crazy. Who, who is crazy? They said that about Judge John and Tobias. And so they wanted me to like, disregard the entire email. I said, no, this is not right. She's interfering in personal matter. We've been told that judges should not be interfering in personal matters. So um, they said, well, we can't do anything about it. You can because you're union protected. You do something about it. You can. You do something about it because you have the union. We're not union protected. And then sometime, a couple of days after that, or sometime after that, I spoke to Melanie about the same issue. The fact that the judges are interfering in personal matters. This is the email that she sent, but the email upset me. I had already made a decision to tell him. I already told the employee who said that he was moving to a different department. And then she um, said, you ain't moving him. So now I'm humiliated as supervisor. You, you undermined my position after I told these employees that they were moving. So I was in the Melody's office literally in tears, and I'm not really a choir, I have seven brothers. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was so upset that it, it upset me to it brought me to tears because now I'm humiliated in front of my employees. So Melody at some point said, you know what, we can't really do much. That's why I found out Melody is not she does not have union protection. So she and I knew there was this larger thing. I knew that there was this judicial something. I didn't know the name of it, but I was really trying not to go there. But at some point Melody said pretty much the same thing. She did that they should not be doing that. So Griselle, Sherry. Um, now they all knew that the judge shouldn't be doing this. It was, it was not right. We never did anything about it. When she refers to Melanie, she has to be clear who she's referring to. Oh, Melanie, the human resource analyst. Melanie Long. Melanie Long, the human resource analyst. Thank you. You have some names that are fairly similar to one another, so just oh. for clarity's sake, there's, I think there's a Melody and a Melody. You obviously have Judge Melody, and Melody is the HR person. If you just sort of make sure you clarify who you're referring to. But I think this might be an appropriate moment to go ahead and break for lunch. Uh, we're a few minutes past the noon hour at this point. So we're going to go ahead and break for lunch. Uh, just as a reminder, there are no recording devices, either um, video or audio recording devices, allowed in the hearing room uh, while we're on a break. So make sure there's no recording devices here in the room. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and break for lunch until 1 o'clock. And, and I guess if we get back here a few minutes early, we'll try to get started early. But Step down and please do not discuss the leader test with the other witnesses outside. Awesome. Thank you. We'll be in recess. court finds in the best interest of the minor child and makes the following findings. For the record, I don't say these things to hear myself talk.
An absolute decree of divorce is granted. By September 6th, you will pay $6,000 of what is due. To find out what the facts were. I make a finding that paternity has been established. He was the potential danger to his children. Where'd you get that? 
Melanie, um, Melanie Wong, the human resource analyst. So now we have hearsay on hearsay. Is that an objection, Mr. Terry? Do you want to respond, Mr. Hutchins? No, I'm just uh, trying to get this witness to tell us where things came from. Any objection is noted for the record, Mr. Terry. Thank you. Let's go to the second bullet. Well, first, before we go to the, the we're still talking about the first bullet with clerks accepting money from an attorney. Uh, um, is there a problem with the clerk accepting money from an attorney? There's absolutely a big problem with clerks accepting money from attorneys. What is they that? Expect favors. They might expect favors. They can alter court minutes, things like that. Is there a code of conduct for the, court, the clerks in the court to call? <coughs> yes, there is. Do each of the clerks uh, get a copy of that? When they yes, to my understanding, they do. Okay. Is that also against that code of conduct? Pardon me? Is, is this against the code of conduct? Absolutely. The second bullet indicates that Judge Wyson gave the same courtroom back at clerk 5,000 for the purchase of a new vehicle. Was that your direct personal knowledge? No direct knowledge, no. Okay, let's, if you would, please try and speak into the microphone. Can you bring it this way, bring it this way a little bit, because you're talking, yeah. I'm talking to me. Are you able to hear that? Yeah. I think the microphone was making it uh, too much. Of okay. So you don't have direct knowledge of this incident, but in the second sentence, you did say, if this is true, this also does not uphold the integrity and independence of the judiciary. Is that your belief? Correct. Let's go to the third bullet on the next page. It starts out, numerous employees have complained about the treatment they received by a backup clerk. And did you have direct personal knowledge of this incident, these incidents? Some, yes. Can you... Tell us which. No, oh, I'm sorry, I took that back. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, that's usually other supervisors tell me about it or. Um, uh. All right, so <coughs> let's clarify that. Okay. You're, we're talking about Department 10, Judge mm -hmm. Bison's courtroom. You say numerous employees complain about the treatment they receive from a different backup clerk. Good. Can you tell us just the first name of this backup clerk? Jose. That's who we're talking about in this one? Correct. Okay. So I mean, I don't have direct knowledge, but I, I don't have a little bit present when this is happening. I've heard about it earlier. You heard about it? Correct. Okay. Who would have told you about this? Either, either um, um, Will Jimenez, who is the training supervisor, or Dave Denton, my boss, um, or Elizabeth, or well, she will be the boss. Or, or um, also Joanne, who is for um, Okay. And there are indications there that Judge Bison uh, intervened and demanded management not to relocate and uh, stating a word there that uh, cuss word. Is that stuff that was personally known to you? Direct knowledge for you? Not direct knowledge, no. If all of this is true, then let's go to the last sentence of that bullet. You say this is extremely concerning because it shows it's not important to the court whether there are hostile work environments. Is that true? Yes, those things are true. If those things are not, that's correct. Then in the next sub bullet, I guess it's a, an open bullet right under that. Since you last wrote this letter, the employee now has a couple of formal bullying complaints. Is this the same individual we were talking about before? I'll say yes. And how would you have found out about that? Um, through um, William Jimenez and Dave Denson. Okay. And was, were you working with each of those closely? Correct, yes. And the same for the next sentence, it says he continues to be protected by Judge Spice, and that's not direct knowledge that you're in that instance. Not, not direct knowledge. Let's, let's move to the next bullet. 
And this one says, most recently an employee filed a formal complaint to the Resources Department against another employee for bullying and creating a hostile work environment. Do you have a name, first name of anybody involved in this that you recall? Marisha. Okay. So this would apply to that situation? Correct. And how much direct knowledge would you have of those people in that situation? No direct knowledge. Again, things you've heard from? From um, her from the employee human resources, Melody Long. Okay. Um, so <coughs> yes. Did you have heard this through supervisors, uh, various information? Will the business you mentioned? Well, Minnesota. in this particular one, when there was, um, in the particular, the, 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 the first bullying complaint, and I got that from Melody, Melody Long, the human resource analyst. She, she brought it to me. I didn't even know they existed. That's kind of fairly new to the county, the whole bullying forms. Okay. Not direct knowledge. Again, 
exist from what source? The care, the care for my boss, Dave Denson, said she was requesting that the order should remove from under me. All right. Let's go to the next bullet. At the bottom of that page, mm -hmm. you're talking about both judges? Correct. They demanded certain backup clerks not be put in the courtrooms to cover shifts? Correct. Not because they don't know how to do their job, but because they don't like the other ladies. And he said on the continuation on the next page, it makes it difficult for supervisors to assign staff. They might be doing this very high school to meet a judicial officer. Did you have personal knowledge of the first sentence, direct knowledge of that first sentence? Both judges demanded that certain backup clerks not be put in their courtrooms. Not direct knowledge, no. Again, who were you getting that? Uh, Dave Denison and William Jimenez. Okay. Um, William Jimenez, he was another supervisor? He, he's, another, he's a training supervisor. Right. And today, what is his position? He is the um, acting division administrator. So he's with Dave Denson? Correct. Okay, he's acting. And <clears throat> has that always been his last name, Jimenez? Uh, Wenz. Wenz was his last name. Spell that, please. W-E-N-Z. Okay, I did notice there's some reference to a William Wins in some of the documents. Those are one and the same? Yes. William Wins. The young man that changed his last name to the man is. Very good. All right, let's talk about the next bullet on the next page. It starts out on bringing your child to work day. Both judges refer to the division administrator with a uh, not so nice term in front of children. Are you directly aware of that? Did you have direct knowledge? Not direct knowledge, no. And again, who did that sound like? Elizabeth. So then you, you don't have any more bullets, and you, you conclude saying these are examples of impropriety, abuse of power, and workplace issues. And this was all prompted by the memo you referred to from Judge Tobiasen? Correct. I just feel we didn't deserve, I, I, we didn't deserve anything like that. We didn't deserve to be thrown on professional. We did not, we were just simply trying to do our jobs. Okay. Then at the, at the bottom, uh, the second to the last paragraph, since my last letter, I've decided to name these judges and hope to begin some sort of process. So previously, you said you filed a complaint with the county, you did not name the, the judges? Correct. And now, this is why you put some names in this name. Yeah. My first time, I was hoping that there somebody would make some changes, but first, initially, I just wanted, I just wanted to stone and tell them to knock it off, stop it. These are not judges' employees. These are Clark County employees. I'm a Clark County supervisor. And if the human resources um, analyst tells me, they should not be involved, judges should not be, this is Melody Long telling me, they should not be involved in first round matters. These are Clark County employees. But yet, no one does anything about it. No one's ever said anything about it. So I'm going to just front and center and push you on that. So who will allow me to do my job? All right. Uh, so you say you can't do your job. Any other concerns about, about doing your job? Or? Yeah, I me mean, getting sued. Because when I, I can't show that I've done something about employees getting bullied. And during that, when I, Supervisory training that said if if you don't do anything, if an employee complains about getting mistreated and you do nothing about it, you're liable. Not only is county liable, I'm liable. Okay. Let's let's talk about on the other hand. You testified earlier that you understood sometimes the difficulty of the clerk's job. Yes, right? first time. And that's something you're trying to work on to Correct. obtain those skills. Correct. Okay, now do you understand that judges have concerns about how their courtroom is run? I and, do. And how it operates and, and whether it's operating correctly or not? Yes. Okay. But in these issues it wasn't about it wasn't about the work itself or the operation, it was about personality. It's like high school, well this person will say doesn't like this person, so I don't want this person in the form. They don't get along, so I don't want this in the form. I mean, you can go out professional, just want to do your job and go home. Okay. And so is that, is that your belief that you need to make sure the clerks are competent in those courtrooms? They should be competent, but that's never been an issue. Okay. Um, well, not in this particular situation. Okay. Not in these situations, these courtrooms. They never complained that the employees didn't know how to do the job. It was always 
Jose didn't get along with them, or Socorro didn't get along with them, or some of Misha didn't get along. It's, it's just seemed like it was just personality. It wasn't the technical part of the job. We can always offer more training if they don't know how to do the job. Okay. But that's, that wasn't the issue. All right, let's talk about then these personality issues then. Uh, do you think judges, uh, do you recognize that judges might have a concern as to who is in there other than competency, who, which clerks might be in their courtroom and that, that they get along with and that the clerks get along with each other? I think we should have some so concern because you want the, the, the court in the floor. Okay. Yeah, and in, in your job, do you think the supervisor needs to take that into account? No, I mean, we always do. We always try to accommodate the judges, always. Plus, because we know there's also a lot of intimidation, so why would we not try to give them what they want? Of course, we're always trying to accommodate. There's going to be times we won't be able to, though. Some judges are not privy to certain information regarding employees, so we can't tell them everything all the time. Okay, let's move on a little bit and, and say uh, we were talking about these employees that were complaining to, to your supervisors and you heard about them. Did you ever get any complaints from any, anybody other than employees uh, about the behavior of the individuals we talked about? Yes, we had some of um, someone on the DA's office, the clerks, that made a complaint about Marisha's behavior towards her. Okay, and how did you get this information? Um, I was sent an email by by, by the by um, Ms. Aaron, the, the the DA clerk who was having issues, who said that Marisha was being rude and disrespectful. Okay, to her. So, so the district attorney's office has clerks at, <coughs> in the at the same time. When the yeah, they sit with the DA and the PDs also. Have Okay, so you received a complaint uh, from an individual like that. Correct. You recall how, how long ago that was? When it might have been? Uh, that was a long, one of Respondents counsel for cross examination. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Tucker, uh, you just mentioned a, a situation with some of the DA clerk. I'm sorry? Uh, the DA clerk. The DA clerk. And that was uh, Erica? No, no, no. Erica. 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 Erica hasn't worked there since 2017. I don't know if she said it today, but she was there. I got an email from her. I think she's still there. She she might, not, she's not the DA clerk, is she? In Judge Julie's court. No, the commander said that I moved her. And this incident goes back to 2017? That's about a half a year ago. What? I don't, I don't have the date. Well, do you know? I don't know. How is that? Do you know? Did you give the. I don't know about Did you give the. Uh, these gentlemen a copy of books? No, I told them about it. Well, uh, one of the uh, things you said is well, you, you seem very concerned that you can't do your job. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't want to you should get this thing. This is the issue. Okay. All right. I just want to go over it 
is I get into the paragraph that starts, my question is, you see it there? Which paragraph I'm sorry? It's the second page. I'm sorry. It is the third page of different one. I approach. Now, in this, in this uh, uh, document that you were directed to by the state, uh, looking at that paragraph. You say that my question is why is court administration at the mercy of all the judges? Yes. Uh, do you understand the, uh, the structure of justice court? Well, that's what I said in this view. I just made my lack of understanding of it, so I was trying to get clarification of it. What's that? But that's what I said in the very beginning. It's my, maybe it's my lack of understanding how the whole process works. All right, so you now know that you, when you wrote this, you didn't know how the process worked. Well, I said, well, this is what I was told. What's that? This, I said this is what I was told how the process works by my by the which are, by my human resource lady. So no, I've never been really clear on it. And you've been the supervisor there for how many years? Well, not because of my in my administration's not telling me. It's not responsive to the question. What's what's the question? Does it mean question for you? I'll be sure. You've been a supervisor in justice court for how long? For three and a half years. Three and a half years, and you come in here today. And tell us that when you wrote this letter, you didn't know how the justice court structure worked. No, I was confused because I'm, I'm saying these are Clark County employees, mm -hmm. and the judges shouldn't be involved in personal matters, but they were front and center. They were sent to the courtroom. So what is it? I wasn't sure. But I was hired to supervise my employees. <laughs> So, and then you go on in this paragraph with how you think the system should be set up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's right. the question? Well, you're telling uh, the Judicial Discipline Committee when you're writing this, wouldn't it be more ideal if court administrators answered county management or county commissioners? Yeah. But that's not the way the world is set up over there, is it? Apparently not. Okay. When did you find that out? They can just fire my bosses, but you know, not very. Really when did you find that out? That that what you're requesting? Well, that's what I've been told. Like my three and a half years, I've been told that the judges can fire my bosses. And they can't, can they? Apparently. Okay. That's the way the system is set up. We should change it. Well, we deal with the system we get now, right? So the idea that a someone above you overrules your decision causes you concern, doesn't it? In this situation, yes, because it's because my boss and I, we're usually on the same page. I don't make these decisions without my boss's blessings. Now, just so we get this straight, you've gone over there three and a half years. You were never a clerk, were you? No, I wasn't. So when you were over there and started as a supervisor, you had never you had never even been a clerk to know what they do. No, because I was hired to be a supervisor. You were what? I was hired to be a supervisor. You're hired to be a supervisor. But don't you think it really helps to be a supervisor if you know what well, yeah, the employees do? That's why I went through a year of training. Uh -huh. That's why I went through a year of training. And what year was that? The fr my first year that I got there. When my was that? 2016? Now, the problem that you see is the fact that the chief judge can tell the, the hires the administrator, right? Chief judge, correct. All right, and as you put it in your testimony, as you you gave the statement that's in front of you to Mr. Uh, the investigator, right? The statement when he interviewed you and took it down. You know about the, the commission's investigator? Yeah. We had it in there. It's, I don't know what, what does it mark? That's all. I'm, I'm not sure what the reference is. The puppet. 
Christine. You're talking about interview? Yes. Yes. They just put everything in, in a different set that we got out there in different formats of so trying to put the two together. You actually told in your statement to the investigator that you were offended because the judge, chief judge, fires the court administrator, right? Correct. And you said that the chief, that the court administrator then is the chief judge's puppet. Pretty much. If, okay. if, if you have to somebody to job on your head and say, I get fired at any time, well, obviously the person's going to be really intimidated. They're going to do exactly what you're telling them to do. So Judge Bonaventure was a puppet. I mean, uh, Kim Kaplan was a puppet as the court administrator. I didn't have those experiences with Judge Bonaventure. What's that? I didn't have those experiences with Judge Bonaventure. Well, I can't speak for Judge Bonaventure and Kim. Kim I, I didn't understand that last thing you said. I said I can't speak about Judge Bonaventure and Kim. Well, Kim was the supervisor, right? To the court administrator. Yes, and when you wrote your letter, Judge Bonaventure was the chief judge. Yes. Yes. So when you wrote this letter, Kim was the administrator and Judge Bonaventure was the chief judge. Yes. And in the thing you're saying that the administrator is nothing but a puppet of the chief judge. Pretty much, but it could be. Or the judges. It what? Or the judges. Or it could be. Or the judge. It would be the judges. I don't know. So. This, this idea of, of, of you not being able to do judge, how many times have you talked personally to Judge Julie? Never very often. Supervisors don't communicate with the, the, the judges very often. Okay. So you haven't had uh, any personal contact with Judge Julie? Not very, minimal. Not very no. many. Not very many. No. If, if generally the way it works, if the judges have an issue, they'll contact the supervisors. If we need to speak to a judge about an issue, we'll. And, and you, you were upset that the judges would go to the court administrator without going to you. I wasn't upset because they did that. I was upset because they were overriding our decision. I wasn't upset because they went to them. So, you know, because my Dave Denson at one point said he was going to be dealing with the, with the judges. He was we, didn't, we didn't have to deal with them. We didn't have to deal with the judges. He was dealing with the judges. I was, well, hired, was, I was hired to supervise super, um, employees. He was, that was his job, right? Pardon me? That was his job. To deal with the judges. That he said at one point he was going to be dealing with the judges. Okay. So you're the supervisor and you make a decision. You can take any decision. Okay. And then your immediate supervisor can overrule that decision, can't he? He can, yes. Okay. And then his immediate supervisor can overrule that too, can't he? Correct. Right. And the judge can overrule that too, can't he? Yes, he can. Okay. But my issue was that. The judge goes to my boss, like the supervisors and the bosses are on the same page. All right. Now, I do want to, uh, you, you understand that the, the function of justice court is to basically dispense justice to the citizens. Correct. But the only reason you have a job is because the judges need staff. Correct. Okay? Mm -hmm. And your job then in dealing with the clerks is to aid the judges. Isn't it? Correct. So the whole thing we come down to is your job is to help make sure that Judge Cellini and Judge Tobiason's court runs smoothly. Correct. Now, Judge Cellini believes that Marisa is an outstanding clerk. Doesn't she? I think she would say that. And Judge Cellini believes that Marissa is, in fact, an asset and an attribute to the way she runs the patent 14, doesn't she? She would say that, yes. Yes, she would. And she'd say the same thing about her backup clerk, wouldn't she? Yes, she would say that. So Judge Cellini will tell you she has a very, very good staff that she deals with. Well, uh, this is not about technical part of the job and how she does the job. It's about how she treats people, bullying, treating people. Well, you haven't, you people told, you, you told us in three and a half years you've spoken to her once or twice. Because I'm not here to supervise Judge Cellini. 
I'm interested in what's opposed to nothing from just my job. Wait a minute. In the three and a half years, you've spoken to Judge Shemini twice. More than, well, I've seen her in the hallway sometimes. What's that? And sometimes in the hallway I've seen her. But she always called, if she had an issue, she would always call Will. They always call Will. Which is okay, too. I don't have a problem with calling Will, calling Dave Denton, or calling him. That's not my, my issue. Well, right. with all due respect, I've read your statement, and I've read your complaint. That is the issue. That's the issue. My issue is not that she doesn't call. Hold on just a second. Just a second. My, my uh, issue Hold on. Stop speaking, please. Do you want to respond to the objection? I thought I don't think it's without a rephrase it. Okay, let's rephrase the question. Your complaint has dealt with the fact that the chief judge hires the court administrator. Yes. And you say that that makes the court administrator a puppet. Uh, the one she, uh, I said that, uh, I said, I didn't, I didn't say uh, this, the one that she appointed a puppet. Who is that? I called Rizal a puppet. Oh, oh, okay, here's the problem. When you wrote that letter, you were writing a letter as you did in Marta, what did you say, 2018. Yeah, I was giving an example of but I didn't, this, I didn't refer to this page. I didn't, and my complaint is nothing about a puppet. My puppet comment came in after. And I'll stand by it. I'm uncomfortable with my truth. As a matter of fact, in your statement, and I can only refer you to, can you have your statement there? Yes. What, what is your statement? First statement. Can you hear me? Thank you. Okay. Start at page 275. And then what you're going to have to do is, because they were not originally page numbered, go to the timestamp. May I approach your choice? Yes, sir. A lot easier. The timestamp at 7 06. Okay. Yeah. We'll be here on the left. Okay. So go to the 7. Because what happens is they become friends with the clerk. That's what you said. You heard anything, right? I don't remember if I said that, but I could have said it. Well, let me read it. Said, we requ uh, requested the clerk to be tried, and then it came, and then it came in. We tried to always give them what they want because what happened is they become friends with the clerks, and the clerks become friends with the back of the clerk, and then they become clicks, and we're trying to avoid clicks. Yes, I okay. remember that now. Right. So you. you one of your complaints is, well, one of the things that you do as a manager is to try to not give the judges the parts that they think work well. Isn't that right? No. Isn't no, that no. what you said? No, but it's, but it's, uh, when I said, if we, if we have, like, for example, when you're into the baby, if you have a Marisha, um, so who know they're very, very good friends and they want to be in the same group, sometimes that's not the best. What am I doing? Well, because sometimes they become clicks, and what happens and when you have a third um, clerk going in there, then they distribute the third clerk that goes in there because they've created this clerk. So sometimes we try to avoid clicks. Not that we don't want to give the judges what they want. We well, just do what we try to avoid clicks. Did you ever ask the judge who she wants? I know she's had a conversation with my boss and okay. with Menace. Right. So she, you know that she thinks that her court is being run very well. She would say that. But, uh, but the other employees are not saying that. Other employees are saying they're mistreating me in this courtroom. They more than once say the same thing. Clubs that don't even really talk to each other say the same thing. Well, that's 
this. So my, my problem is not Chalini. Or uh, uh, there, my you problem is the way. Before this Just wait until it was a question to then ask the question. <clears throat> Now, you mentioned a situation you said that happened with a person by the name of Nenpa. Nenpa? Yeah. Look at Commission Exhibit page 127. <clears throat> you see that? Yes, we schedule. Right, are you familiar with this document? I'm not. All right, well, what this is, is is a list of when the people were in the court for the departments. And this is Judge Chilini's court. Mm -hmm. And when you go through this, at page 127, about halfway down, all right, you see August 28th? No. Put your finger on it. August 28th. August yeah. 28th. Mm -hmm. And you see. That has Nympha in Judge Chilini's court. Right. Now, you said there's never been a complaint about performance. Now, you were aware as her supervisor that. I wasn't Nympha supervisor at that time. Huh? I wasn't Nympha supervisor at that time. In 2018? I was not. She just, she just became my supervisor when we switched all the courtrooms. Okay. She's not my employee. All right, so she you was were. Not my employee. She is today. This is one of the ones that you put down as your first complaint, that when the prosecutor went through the bullet, it was meant for, right? No. Well, she was the, the, the original, the only complaint I got was from Melody handing it to me. And it, it was, but apparently Nifa had filled out okay. a bullying complaint. All right. But, but Marisha was my employee, that's why I was okay. addressing Marisha, not Nifa. All right, well, here's the thing. You see there, the only time Nifa is in the court, <coughs> If we go through all that, the only time she's in is August 28, 2018. You see that? What? In, in, in the schedule? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if you look, you see, so the only time that she's in there had this, this complaint has to be back to last August. Last August? Mm -hmm. August 2019. Right? Correct. Right. Now, you're aware if you look down there, you see that she is in there as the clerk. Correct. And are you aware that they have pro se judges, temporary judges? Yes. And one of them is Holly Straversky. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Holly Straversky was in court that day with Menver, wasn't she? Yes. And it was Holly Straversky who complained that Nipa didn't know what she was doing. Nipa wasn't comfortable in that form. She's not, she wasn't accustomed to clerking in that right. She wasn't accustomed to being the lead clerk in the, the domestic violence, right? Correct. Right. To my understanding, right. right. And Judge Kravitsky complained that she had screwed the calendar up that day, didn't she? I don't remember what her complaint was about. What? Yeah, you, you sure you don't? Because Judge Cellini. I remember Judge Cellini calls the top. Talk to you about yeah. it, didn't it? And Judge Lee said, you better not send her back into the domestic violence court until she knows what she's doing, because Judge Straversky has said that the calendar went hours into the noon time for an 8 o'clock calendar. It's not what, normally what the process is, normally the, if, if the clerk is not in, we'll put the backup clerk to clerk, but, in, but, that, but the backup clerk is Deanna. Deanna was training, so Deanna was in the courtroom. Um, training another employee, so she couldn't sit in there. So normally Nipa wouldn't have gone in there. No, normally what the question, and Julia was right, Nipa should have been looking for the, that day. It should have been Nipa. What's that? I said, I said Deanna, Deanna should have been clerking. The backup clerk, Deanna, the, the regular backup clerk should have been clerking. So she, 
Judge Ling is right about that. We should have put Deanna to clerk, although she was trained, and that's why the decision was made not, not to move her. But this incident happened with the pro tem judge, with Judge Holly Skrzewski, <coughs> and she told Judge Cellini, and Judge Cellini brought it to your attention, right? She was with that, mm, yes. Right, now this is the same, that's yes. the only time if you look through those records, take my word for it, if, if you will. Objection, Your Honor. Okay. Don't ask it. Spend the time and look for it. It's the only time you're going to see me then, but in Judge Tony's court. Objection, move to strike. I don't know. Hold on just a second. So, articulate your objection for the record, Mr. Hutchins. Counsel is testifying for the record instead of asking proper questions, and I move to strike the statements as, as without basis. Mr. Uh, Darnell. Just a second. It's cross examination. Two, I'm asked leading questions. That is the essence of it under the rules. And three, I don't want to have this person go through and look at 200 names unless they're telling me it someplace else. If they got another one, she'd say, tell me. Mr. Bertard, just a second, ma'am. Please wait until we're finished with the objection. <clears throat> you're, you're welcome to lead the witness all you want, but let's just make sure it doesn't sound like we're testifying. So go ahead and restate your question for a few minutes. Isn't it true that Memphis was only in about the point being that one day. Well, I must add that sometimes even when the schedule comes out, sometimes changes are made and they're not made on the schedule. But if, you, if, we, can, if we can get a copy of the first bullying complaint, you would see the date that she was in the courtroom. All right, so the complaint that Nenfa alleged, allegedly complained about <coughs> would have been last August, August 2018, right? And you know what, and the, the truth is, I don't know when she filed that complaint because like I said, I wasn't involved in the whole bullying complaint. I didn't even know the bullying complaint form existed. I only found out about it when Mel Melody brought it to me, so I don't know when Nifa filed the complaint because, again, I wasn't, I wasn't part of that. I didn't even know again. Like, so the Nifa complaint, you had nothing to do with it. You're talking Pardon? about You had nothing to do with the Nifa complaint. You're talking about the recent complaint. Correct. I learned, I learned about the recent, but then I, now I knew that there was this bullying form that you know, it was new to the county, but I, I don't know how it was. Right, I don't so, know when Nifa filled out this complaint. All right. The, uh, now also in that uh, document you're looking at with the things, you'll see that uh, Risa was in Judge Cellini's court from November 26 to looks like November 30th. You see that? That was page 129. You said November? Yeah. Like November, what, sorry? Page 129. Uh -huh. Two. November. Is it there? Yeah, approach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you said that Risa filed a complaint, when did she file the complaint? I'm not sure I have to look at it. I don't know what she, she, she I have to look at the complaint. I don't know. Well, that's but not something that you knew about. The what? That's the something you heard about. The complaint? Yeah. The bullying complaint? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Nipa brought it to me. Nipa had brought it to me. Who did? Me, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Not Nipa. Risa brought me the complaint. And what? I sent it to Human Resources. I gave it to Melody and Clark and Human Resources because that's, those bullying complaints, those go to Clark County, it has nothing to do with me. We don't, we don't handle those bullying complaints, those, are, those go beyond the departments. All right, uh, if I could have you look at the, uh, it should be the line, or it should
40. It's the last page backwards. Okay. And what is the date of that? March 6, 2019. And so, Reese, are you aware of that? Yes. When did you become aware of it? Um, I think Dave had told me about it or sent it to me. Dave told you about it? I think Dave had told me about it. Yes. Now, that's the, what date? What is the date? March 6. March 6. So, this is the day after. You sent your complaint to this commission. That's the date I'm typing. Like, what is the date? Is it is March 6th? And what is your complaint? Date? March 6th. But I'm getting off the home in my computer and I start typing stuff in the night. It could be a week or two later when I sent it. So, I, you know what? If I had known that this was going to happen, I would have been a lot better with my dates. I would have kept, I would have kept dates. I didn't know what we were doing in the church because I don't have to my dates. Well, Now, one of the complaints that you had in the interview was that you didn't think Giselle should be the court administrator, right? Yeah, because you didn't meet the qualifications. Now, it's not your job to hire the court administrator, is it? No, it's not. It's your job to follow the court administrator's directions, right? Correct. That she's your boss. Yes. But you went through. I've never had a problem. What's that? And I've never had a problem following directions from my superior. You just got a uh, complaint again against you. Really? Did you get uh, get an admonition? From Brazil? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what we have is the situation where you, oh, where you are claiming that the judges want certain clerks in and not others, right? Yes. And you admit, do you not hear, that the judges work with the Kate, the clerks that they want in there? What are you saying? Uh, the clerks that are in their court are the ones that the judges work well with. The, yeah, the clerks. Okay. And so if your job is to make sure that the clerks have an efficient courtroom, help to have an efficient courtroom, then the judge's opinion is very valuable, isn't it? I, I agree, but not when it comes to behavior. Again, you're trying to take this back to, to technical part of the job. That's not the issue. The issue is behavior. Well, the one with NIFA was, in fact, an issue with that. We yeah, but that I don't know with Michelle, nothing like that. That's not my issue. I don't have an issue with the judges needing an, an employee that needs training. That's, that's not what, for me, that has not been my issue. Again, it's all about behavior and attitude and the way you treat people with respect. How many judges have are on this list that have certain clerks? I'm sorry? How many judges that are on your this so called spreadsheet you have? What are you talking about? This? No. You, we were told you have a spreadsheet. Well, back in the day, when I first started, I was getting a spreadsheet and there was a list of people who you couldn't put in certain courts. Okay. And so Judge like, Delaney like, wasn't even a judge then. Was she it? wasn't. She wasn't. Okay. Now let's move forward. Have you seen that spreadsheet since? No, because we were told to get rid of it. So this spreadsheet that we were told predates Judge Delaney if we haven't had any sense. So now we just do it verbally and mentally. You do what? We do it verbally. We know that certain board, we can't go up, for example, we can't go up when it's a different need. And Carmen in Department 10. We don't want to put me in fire in Department 11. Like, well, let me just ask, don't you, think, <coughs> don't you think it is, it's much better for the harmony of the court and the way it works if the clerks themselves get along? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to just I'm really big on And so, what you're claiming is what you want to do, you, want, you wanted to take the lead clerk and Judge Cholini and move her someplace else. We had talked, you know, it didn't even go anywhere because we knew that wasn't going to happen. I wanted to take the backup clerk in Department 10 and move him somewhere else. We, we never talked about moving Marisha somewhere else. You never talked about it. I don't like to like, you know. All right. You never talked about it. I have nothing further. Any additional questions, Mr. Terry? I do, but may I have a time check? 
Yes. Time check from the clerk. Four hours and 11 minutes remaining for the respondents. Thank you. Please proceed, Mr. Terry. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. When counsel went through the bullet points, as we referred to, you said you had no direct knowledge of any of them. No. Right. Okay. One more time. How long have you been with the justice court system? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. So let's start with what your bullet points were. This allegation of Rita, the clerk, taking money from lawyers, did you investigate that yourself? I did not. Did you ever ask, was this allegation ever sustained? No, I did not. Okay. Did you ever ask, did any lawyers ever come forward and say, this is what Rita did, she borrowed money from me, she took money from me, anything like that? No. Do you work on rumors? No, but what, okay, my you human resources, my human resources. Hold on just a second. I'm Please don't, Mr. Yeah. Terry, hold on one second. Please don't speak over each other. So wait until one person finishes speaking and then the other person can talk, uh, start speaking so that we don't uh, make the court reporters laugh at Mr. Ball. Go ahead, Mr. Terry. Most of my questions are going to be yes or no responses. And I yield to whatever the His Honor tells you. But if you listen to the question, most of them are going to be yeses and noses, okay? Okay. You never investigated the situation with Rita, correct? No. Okay, you worked on rumor, correct? Correct. Okay, you never talked to Rita about it, did you? No. Okay, you never tried to find any lawyers that supposedly gave or lent her money, correct? No. no. Yeah, you're correct, yes. And I am correct? You're correct, yes. Okay, so pure rumor, pure speculation, correct? Correct. Okay. Now let's go to the $5,000 that her honor gave to Rita. Okay, you remember that as being your second bullet point? Yes. Okay. And you indicated to the commission that you felt that that <coughs> helped create a hostile work environment, correct? That particular situation? Is that what your answer is? That, that particular helped, situation? Let me ask the question. That that helped create a hostile work environment, yes or no? I don't recall saying that. I'm that sorry? I don't recall saying, saying that in that particular situation. Well, counsel, special know, prosecutor was honest. very clear when he said those first four things, did they all, and that would be Rita, the $5,000, the black up clerk, and a square bit, those all created a hostile work environment, and you said yes. Oh, I'm just going to apologize. That one particular Okay. So did the $5,000 gift from Judge Deviason to Rita create, in your mind, a hostile work environment? No, sir. It does not? It does not. Okay, so we'll eliminate that one. Okay. That was actually a nice thing to do, wasn't it? No, uh, not, not for a court employee. Wasn't that a nice thing to do, to give somebody money? Well, it depends what it is. I mean, what a judge giving a... No, because what we as, we as employees, and I yes can't no. money. Yes or no? No. Was it? No, not You ever get a Christmas present from a co-employee? Yes or no? She's an elected official. She's not a co-employee. Yes or no? I'm not going to answer that question. I didn't hear your answer. I'm not going to answer your question. That doesn't take oh. a yes or no answer. Okay. You need to answer his question, sir. Oh. Can you restate the question? Sure. Do you ever get a Christmas present from any of your co-employees? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Does that create a hostile? Listen no. to my question. Don't start to answer before I ask. Does that create a hostile work environment? Yes or no? No. Isn't that a nice thing to do? Yes or no? Not for a judge getting an employee, no. Now, in reference to the backup court, you're talking about Jose, correct? Did you ever investigate as to how Judge Tobiasen was notified that they wanted to remove Jose from the court? Yes or no? Yes. Did you understand that she was notified on the day of the move that they were planning to do that? We weren't asking her permission, we were telling her. What is the answer to my question, yes or no? We weren't asking her. We what is the answer? Uh, I'm letting her answer. We'll have to say yes or no. Like what is, is the answer to my purposes. question? This is not a yes or no answer. You answer the way you best you can answer the question. 
whatever is easy to do. Just uh, whatever you're posing that question, just, 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 just answer the question the best you can, whatever the answer is. <clears throat> Same day that they were attempting to move Jose, that that was going to occur. Yes or no? We won't ask for permission when we're talking to her. So, so yes, the same move. day. I can't. Either I can't so, yes. understand her answer, or I can't hear. So, would you repeat your answer? And it's either going to be a yes or no. We won't ask for permission when we're talking to her. We'll move the hand. So that's telling her. Yes. But yet you recognize that it's important for a judge to have clerks in their department that are Not the clerk, the clerk. Let me finish my question. That are competent and that they can work with. Correct? Correct. Okay. Now, the fourth thing that you mentioned was swearing. Now, is that swearing like I might say, and excuse me for doing it, damn, you consider that to be a swear? That depends if your parents is okay. As opposed to damn you. Now that is, I would acknowledge, derogatory. So when you talk about swearing, is it using a swear word or pointing it in a specific direction in a derogatory way? Which is it? I'm sorry, what was your question? What was I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What was your question again? Wow. Are you asking me? Okay. Um, There's a distinction between a plain swear word, for uh -huh. example. Damn. Okay. As opposed to, if I say to you, "Damn you," which okay. you might certainly take offense to, and I would acknowledge that. Okay. So this swearing situation. One. Did you ever hear it? Did you hear it yourself? No. No. So once again, you're relying on somebody else. Okay. Okay. You don't know if it was. Damn, like the first example I said, where somebody would say a, what would be construed as a swear word as opposed to damn you, which would be derogatory in nature. Correct? Yes. Okay. That's what Okay, redirect from the prosecuting counsel. And 
What was your career with regard to using your degrees? Um, I first worked in court administration in California at the Fresno Superior Court. Um, I was the director of fiscal operations there at the end when I left. And then I went to be the court executive officer in Alpine County, which is in Northern California. And I came to the Los Angeles Justice Court as the court administrator. All right, the first court you were with was, was where? Fresno. Was that Fresno County? Yes. And for 10 years? Yes. The financial officer? That's correct. And the executive for Alpine County, what is the executive? The executive is equivalent to the court administrator. In which court? The one you Right, it's the same position as was here. It's more responsibility because the courts in California are consolidated. So they don't have a municipal justice and district court. It's all superior courts there. And tell us a little bit about how you got your position with the Las Vegas Justice Court. Um, as far as what I did to interview? Or? Yeah. Did, did you go through an interview process? I did. I interviewed with um, most of the judges. I don't remember if everyone was there. The assistant county manager, Jeff Wells, was there, and the HR, and the HR, I can't remember her name. Um, and then I also interviewed in front of the managers and supervisors. So when you say HR, do you mean human resources? Yes. And was that with the county or the court? It was the county HR manager. All right. At the time you were hired, did you get hired under a contract? No. Okay. And who, who did you understand you reported to? It was a quasi um, to reporting to the assistant county manager, Jeff Halls, and the chief judge. At the time, it was Judge Bonaventure. Were there any court and county agreements that would affect your job? There was an MOU between the county and the court um, that with regards to me, it talked about that um, I would be an M plan employee, which means a management employee, and have certain benefits based on that. And that um, the judges would choose the court administrator, and then the county appointed, the county commissioners appointed me. Are you aware of agreements uh, <coughs> for any non supervisory jobs? Uh, there, some of the employees are union, and they um, there's agreements for SEIU for supervisory and non supervisory. Between the SEIU and the county. Yes. Now, tell us what your duties were as you understood them when you became court administrator. I was responsible for basically everything that was outside of the courtroom, as far as how uh, they workload, the employees, um, except for the judicially appointed employees. Um, there was IT, there was all the operations departments, human resources, finance, etc. And during the course of your, your job, did you have occasion to have your performance review? Yes, the uh, M plan, which is the management plan, employees had an evaluation every December. Annually? Annually. And did you have yours? Yes. And who would sign off on your review? Chief Judge Bonaventure. And during the time you were with the court, did you have any disciplinary actions? No. Any counsel? No. And when were you terminated? Uh, March, I don't remember the exact date, March of 2019. And tell the commission how you were terminated. How did that happen? I uh, came to work. The head marshal came to my office and said that Chief Judge Balkum, who was the new chief at the time, uh, wanted to talk to me. I had just come off FMLA. Actually, I was still on FMLA and took me into her chambers and she handed me, or she asked me if I would rather resign or be terminated. And then handed me a letter that said that the judges lost confidence in me. And did you know any more about that? I did not. Did you know how they lost confidence in you? No. Nope. No reasons provided other than the, no. you're done? There was no other conversation. In your position, were you familiar with uh, Judges Tobias and Jane? Yes. And you see them here today? I do. Now, we've heard some testimony from David Denson and, and from Maggie Tucker, and David Denson took us through 
a lot of things I'm just going to refer briefly for you. If we don't need to go into a lengthy explanation about that. Can you describe generally how the clerks in the court were hired, trained, and assigned to departments when you got there and if there's any change after you got there? When I first got there, the clerks were hired through the county process, uh, interviewed through the court and panel that would interview them. And then their training was by putting them in different courtrooms. They went immediately to courtrooms and just trained, uh, all, it was 14 courtrooms at the, time, at the time, and they would go into different courtrooms and train. Um, had a meeting, uh, a judge's meeting early on when I first got there, and there was a lot of um, judges that were upset about the training and that it wasn't consistent, and that there were problems with the clerks not knowing their jobs, so I um, created a training plan and um, assigned it was Jolene at the time, and then Will soon after. Will who? Jimenez. Okay. Um, he became the training supervisor, and every new hire would go through almost a nine-month training program where they'd sit in the training room, learn the case management system, um, basically book training, and then they would go into the courtrooms. And this is something that was established after you got there? Yes. For which you were responsible? That's correct. Now, <clears throat> And with regard to the assignments of clerks to specific court rooms, can you explain how that occurred when you got there and if there was any change? Um, when I got there, um, there was um, a lot of judge involvement as far as that they wanted certain clerks or didn't want certain clerks. Um, and I soon found out that that was really difficult because we had some vacancies and we weren't able to fill all the courtrooms. It was really difficult. We had to put supervisors in to cover. So um, along with the training program, we had a judges meeting, and um, Judge Bonaventure wrote a memo. What came out of it is that there would be no blacklist, and the blacklist that I'm referring to is that certain court clerks could not go into certain courtrooms. And so we were supposed to wipe the slate clean and administration would do the assignments. Was there input from the other judges to Chief Judge Bonaventure at that time? It was, it was during a judge's meeting. So um, I'm not sure if every judge was there. There's um, judges meeting notes where it would show the attendance and who was there. But um, the judges participated in the conversation, yes. Okay, now this was it. What time period? It was late 15, 2015. I'm going to refer you to page 51 of that big notebook in front of you. <clears throat> now, while you're looking for that, can you tell us this is December 2015? You're familiar with Judge Jolene. Would she have been there at the time? No, she was not elected yet. When was she elected? Do you know? 2016. <laughs> uh, the time on page 51. Okay, and what is that document? This is the email slash memo that went out summarizing the new um, policy for okay. assigning the clerks and the backlist. The back okay, and you're on the CC on this, is that correct? Yes. Uh, did you have a hand in, in the preparation of, of this in any way? Or the memo? The memo or the contents of how it came about? Um, Judge Bonaventure and I talked about it, and he had me read it before it went out. Okay. And was this consistent with what you're telling us as far as what you were trying to do this in your position? Yes. So after you got there, the, the training had changed. You said something about nine months for clerks, is that right? Yes. And tell us about the, the assignment of clerks uh, to different departments. How, how was that occurring? When there was an opening in a courtroom, either for a backup clerk or a court clerk, we would do a recruitment and they would go through training and then they would be assigned by the criminal division manager, administrator to the courtrooms. When a new judge came on, uh, was it a judge court, court already assigned to a specific department for that judge? Or it depends. So 
for example, if um, a judge retired in a judge retire or um, we had a new department, he would, if the judge retired, then the clerk, clerk would stay in that department. I mean, it just depended, but that was the procedure. But like for Department 15, which was a new department, then there was nobody assigned to that department. Were clerks, before you came and when you got there and after you got there, were, were there permanent assignments for clerks or, or how, how was that handled? There were clerks in certain courtrooms for a long period of time. Um, they had been with their judges for quite a while, sometimes even years. But it, we had a pool of clerks that could fill in for vacations and say, and in theory, they weren't assigned to the judges or the courtrooms. They could have gone anywhere in the court. And what were the reasons for them to go anywhere? For cross-training, and if there was vacation or sick, they could go into any courtroom cover. We heard testimony also about the organization of the clerks into I guess supervisory sections or divisions. That was, I believe it was the criminal division, division, criminal division. Uh, did those exist when you got there? The <clears throat> whole criminal division was reorganized when I got there. Um, we didn't have a criminal division administrator at the time. Dave Denson was doing civil and criminal, and so I took it upon myself to reorganize the criminal division. It was a large division and it needed more than one supervisor slash manager. So in addition to adding the training supervisor, I added an administrator to the criminal and then split the clerks up between two supervisors. Let me refer you to page 41 of, of the exhibit book. What is uh, that document? You, you have only a cover page, it looks like, and a page 12 or 13 on the next page. This is a part of the model for the product for the judicial place. And who, who would receive a copy of that? The new employees receive this when they arrive. Okay. And any of the judges have, have this available to them? It's available at any time for any of the judges. When I started, any new, new judge that came on the bench was the paperwork that the employees received. And my, what I told them was that they needed to know what rules, laws, regulations, and procedures their employees were under. Did you and your, were you and your staff responsible for enforcing this? Yes. Okay. And you look on that page 42, I guess it's paragraph 323. Does it prohibit clerks from taking money from attorneys appearing before them? Yes. Does it prohibit clerks from accepting gifts from others, and I'll quote, whose interests may be substantially affected by the performance or non-performance of the duties? Yes. When you began uh, in, I believe you said July 2015? Yes. Was there any judicial involvement in the assignment of clerks to court? Um, the judicial officers definitely made it known, some of them, uh, what clerks they wanted in their courtrooms. And then that led up to the memo that was distributed by Chief Judge Bonaventure? Yes, well, I went to Judge Bonaventure and told him that it was getting increasingly difficult to fill the courtrooms because I didn't have enough clerks that could go into each courtroom because there was a blacklist and so certain clerks couldn't go into certain courtrooms. And then when someone would call and say, if you're going on vacation, um, I didn't have anybody to put in as well. So I had to put supervisors in. And how many clerks are we talking about that, that you had the actual positions or that need, or positions were needed in the courtrooms? Well, each courtroom had one clerk and one backup clerk. And then we had a pool as well. Now, after the meeting you discussed where all the judges were present and then Chief Judge Bonaventure issued that memo, did you meet again with the judges as a whole regarding the, the clerk assignment issue? 
Um, right after the memo came out, um, everything was going pretty well for about six months, and then um, there were judges that would get involved again and say, I want a certain clerk, or I don't want a certain clerk. Um, so there wasn't, there was discussion at meetings, but not uh, one of the, the same kind of judges meeting where that was the topic of conversation. There's been discussion uh, before the commission now about a blacklist. You mentioned the term blacklist, and it was mentioned in Chief Judge Bonaventure's memo. And after that memo, did a blacklist exist at all? Before the memo, there was an actual spreadsheet that was, um, I believe, kept by the supervisors in the criminal um, with names on it and who couldn't go in which department. That was technically thrown out um, after that meeting, but once judges started um, indicating who they wanted again or who they didn't want, um, there was an informal list kept by the supervisors so they could keep track. First of all, do you recognize that judges might have a concern or desires as to how their courtrooms operate and because of that, uh, the competency of clerks in those courtrooms? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was the reason that I did the training program. You know, the biggest complaint was consistency, and um, I wanted to make sure that clerks um, were fully trained and could go into any courtroom when I understood that judges liked the way a certain clerk worked. Some were faster, some were slower. Um, so we tried to take that into account anytime we were getting an assignment. So once you were beginning to get some more preferences, you said uh, about six months later, did you uh, still have any occasion to work with the judges in their desires? Yeah, I had judges that called me directly, and I also judges that went to the criminal administrator, either um, asking for a certain clerk or telling me or the administrator that they didn't want a certain clerk. Now, did you have any concerns about why you wanted to, to end the practice of judges uh, having preferences on the selection of their clerks? Did you have any uh, reasons that you, you would do that? Uh, if rational? Well, if I can't cover the courtrooms, then I can't um, give the court at their access to justice and their due process because there's no clerk to cover the courtrooms. So I didn't want to start that practice up again. If there were any disciplinary or performance issues, then um, we would take care of it in administration. We would do retraining. We would go through an interview, an investigative interview, go through um, progressive discipline if it was needed. Um, we didn't just, it's not fair to just say, you can't come in my courtroom anymore. Did there come a time when, when you became aware that judges did have some input of some kind into those decisions about uh, clerk discipline and um, personnel types of matters? From the beginning, from when I got there, I asked the judges to please not get involved in any personnel issues. Um, my concern, and I, this is, um, I saw this in California, is um, the judicial immunity doesn't get very over when I didn't want judges to be subpoenaed. I didn't want them to get in the middle of personnel issues. I thought they should concentrate on their courtroom and their caseload, and the administration would take care of any personnel issues and make sure it was done fair across the board. So, as of the time that you left court, can you describe to the commission what the situation was with regard to judges getting involved with personnel matters? Even when I left in March? Correct, just leading up to that. Um, there were judges that were very involved in personnel issues when I left, with me personally and with HR and with the criminal administrator. And there were some judges that didn't get involved at all, completely left up to administration. And let's talk now about Judges Wise and Judge Cholini. Were, in your recollection, were they involved at all in those kind of personnel matters? Yes. And did you talk to, to those judges about personal matters? I didn't talk to them about specifics. 
I always told them that I didn't, wasn't able to talk to them about it. I didn't want to talk to them about it. They shouldn't be involved in any personal issues. Let's, let's try and get a little more specific with regard to, uh, say, Judge Twice and then the uh, we've been discussing the backup card. We'll just use the first name, Jose. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Okay. How would you be familiar with uh, that, that individual and that backup card? Jose. Um, first, how would you be aware? How would I be aware? So, Dave Denson, who was the criminal administrator, and Melanie Long, who was the HR manager or analyst, would keep me apprised of any complaints, discipline, or anything. And what do you recall uh, about that, that back of clerk Jose any difficulties there might have been? There was a couple of complaints, kind of two categories. Um, like I said earlier, with the new employees would go through about a nine month training depending on their speed and once they were done with that they would go into the courtrooms and train and when we put new employees into just Bison's courtroom, there were complaints from Jose about Jose that he was rude and that he wouldn't answer questions and he belittled the new employees. Um, in fact, we had, I believe, four employees, new clerks quit from after they were being trained in that courtroom. And there was um, also other complaints, <coughs> harassment, hostile work environment, regarding uh, Jose as well. And would you, do you recall any conversations you would have had with Judge Bison regarding that individual? I don't believe I had very many conversations with Judge Bison about it. It would have probably been Dave Benson. <coughs> um, is there any, uh, you don't recall any comment by to me about Jose? Yes. I don't, I don't remember. It would it help refresh your recollection if I showed you your interview with Dave? Probably. Oh, it's been a while. It's been almost a year. So, so, so you were interviewed by the commission investigator, Adam Kugnansky? Yes. Okay. Did he ask you some of these questions and what your recollection was? Yes. Would it help refresh your recollection if you saw that? Sure. Can we have a moment, please? No problem.